Avoiding certain food dyes to help improve a child's behavioral issues is common advice, and not just on TikTok. Several doctors stand behind this recommendation as well. But several doctors also prescribe vitamin D, and that's usually pretty useless according to the data. So where did the data stand on food dyes? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. In 2021, the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment in California issued a report on the behavioral effects of synthetic food dyes in children. While the public conversation on food dyes focuses a lot on specific red dyes, this paper actually looks at several different dyes, including blues, yellows, and greens. The report is over 300 pages long, so if you're looking for something a little more digestible, they also published a paper on the findings in the report in 2022, which is only about 19 pages. While our read of the data ended up being much different, the report essentially concluded that data do support a relationship between synthetic food dyes and behaviors in some children. The authors found 25 trials conducted in actual children, many of which were randomized, controlled, and blinded, though not all met those criteria, and they examined results from all of them. Here's where the media took a look at the report's conclusions and exclaimed that over half the studies indicated that behavioral issues were significantly associated with food dye consumption. This is also where we took a look at the conclusions and exclaimed that 12 of the 25 studies, so basically half, did not indicate such an association. But half isn't something to brush off either way. So we looked closer at all the studies. We were able to easily see a lot of information about each study. We noticed right away that only three of the positive studies had a large effect size. Why do we care about that? Because it tells you how meaningful a relationship is. The larger effect size means that a finding has more practical significance, which is really what we care about, how much something might actually affect our lives. We then noticed that of those three studies, one was judged by the authors to be low quality, leaving us with just two positive studies to really consider. That sounds a lot less convincing than half, right? We tried to look at those two studies specifically by locating them in a table the authors included in a supplementary data section. However, we went down a rabbit hole because it appeared that there were four studies with large effect sizes and no indication of data quality. So finally, we gave up on pinpointing these exact two papers and just looked at all the larger studies with positive associations. I think it's best here to pull back from all these details and provide the overview of our long and winding search through this report. Many of the papers had so few participants that the results could hardly be reliable. In the larger papers, the effects were often very small and were variable between studies. It's hard to get a clear picture of anything here because the methods and the results of these papers are all over the map. Across many of the papers, there's an obvious difference between parent ratings and more objective measures of behavior, with parents reporting much larger effects of food dyes on their child's behavior. For example, in one 1978 study, parents reported a 57% reduction in behavioral issues when food dyes were removed, while teachers reported only a 34% reduction. You can see this as well in studies that had a placebo control. When parents think their children are being exposed to dyes, they report worse behavior, even when their child is only receiving the placebo, which in many cases was a juice without any dyes at all. So, in a nutshell, the results are all over the place. But we don't see anything convincing when it comes to food dyes and behavioral issues in children. That's not to say that we're against removing dyes. They don't have any real purpose when it comes to health. We just aren't very alarmed about their effect on behavior. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on processed foods and depression. We'd appreciate it if you'd like this video. Subscribe to the channel down below. Maybe go on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd like to specially thank our research associates, Joe Sevitz and Edward Lillehome, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral, Sam.